Christian outrage hits very close to home because I feel like for a long time I was a part of it in some way. So in this video, don't feel like I'm just throwing stones at other people. No, it's really just talking about where I was personally and my ministry was in some ways um, for a while and how I've grown from that and how I've seen that to be faulty. Okay, so I hope you'll benefit from this video, especially if you're on social media at all. You kn will know what I'm talking about when I say Christian outrage. And it takes many different forms. But let me, before I go into the social media aspect, let me begin with the personal experience of Christian outrage. Here's just an example. Okay, a girl gets saved. She gets saved. Maybe it's the age of 17, 18, something like that. And she goes through the stage of, you know, she's pumped. She's excited. You know, you were there when you you got saved for the first time. You were excited. You're like on fire for God. You're like, oh my goodness, my life is changed. I see the world completely different. I'm pumped, right? I'm pumped. And what happens? Well, just like a baby needs to consume milk in order to grow, she's consuming tons and tons of not only Bible, but sermons and teachings. And she finds Christians on social media where she's consuming all this different content. She's just gobbling up. She gets in this mentality of, I'm going to fight for God, right? I'm going to fight for God. I need to defend the faith. She gets into apologetics and evangelism, and she's seeing so much evil in the world. She says, man, man, the world is so screwed up. The, so, the world is so evil. I can't, I can't understand how much evil there is. In her own heart too, she remembers what she used to be like and what she was involved in and, and it disgusts her and it causes her to double down on calling out the wickedness and the evil of the world that she sees. It's an understandable response. The next phase, and this isn't always how it works, but she gets caught up with a particular theological stream. I'm with this pastor. I'm with these core set of beliefs. Oh man, these other people that believe in, you know, these tertiary issues, they're a bunch of dummies and ha ha, I laugh at them or they're dumb or they don't know the Bible or whatever and I'm connected to these pastors and, and I'm going to associate with myself with this group. Now you might say, Isaac, there's nothing wrong with like identifying with a particular camp or really being in, interested in theology and I say, no, absolutely not. But tons of my ministry has been part of apologetics and being interested in how to uh, address the world and bring the gospel to it and like uh, none of that is a wrong thing, right? It's really when you take those things and you entangle it with your own insecurities, your own fear, your own anger, your own, the things that you haven't dealt with in, within your own heart. And when those things spill into the public sphere, when they spill into how you're addressing things, when they spill into how you're talking about other Christians, that's when it becomes a problem. I remember being a lot more involved in what I would call Christian outrage. I can't believe this LGBT church. I can't believe this, you know, these people that are doing this. I can't believe these people that are saying this false thing about the Bible. I believe there's a place, absolutely, because the Bible says it, um, a place for righteous anger. That's true. Absolutely. And there is a place to turn over the tables. I get that. That is part of it. But when that's all you're doing, when all you're doing is getting angry, about these people and those people and these people or these groups and those groups because they're just so wicked and they're so evil, what have you turned into? They're just constantly angry. And you know these kind of Christians that are constantly angry and complaining about the world and this is what this politician is doing and this is what this you know pastor has said and this is why LGBT, awful, whatever, da 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 And they're just constantly frustrated and angry. There's no joy there. There's no ha excitement or, or peace there. It's all, man, we're going to hell in a handbasket. They're depressing to hang out with. They get caught there. It's like the news cycle. It never, ever ends. And you see this on social media too. I mean, and this is where I believe I, I played a part in it too, because even though when I would react to videos, I would try to bring the gospel in as best as I could. In, in some ways, even when people saw the videos I was reacting to, they, their response was just, it was just outrage. It was just anger. It was just vitriol towards these people as human beings. And that was like something that really hit me hard where I'm like, dang, you know, I believe that what they're teaching is false, but I don't believe all this other, I don't, I don't, I don't hate them. I don't, I, I don't, I don't despise them. I don't think they're disgusting. Um, they're image bearers of God. And that's what hit me hard because I was making, uh, for a while, I was making a lot of content about LGBT. 
issues, right? And and just saying, talking about what the Bible says about and what I believe the Bible says about the marriage is man, between one man and one woman and, and how I affirm that and talking about gender issues and, and just, and I don't, I'm not compromising on any of those things. Okay. But having people in my own life and neighbors and, and folks that are in that lifestyle and just seeing the vitriol and the outrage that comes from that came from some of those videos that I was posting, right? In terms from 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 Christians, right? From Christians being like, these people are disgusting. They, you know, the, like it caused me to take a second look and and not to say that I won't talk about those things. No, I definitely will. But I don't want to be a part of fueling outrage culture. Because here's what it does. Here's what it does at its core. It is about focusing on all that the world is is up to, all the controversies, all the whatever of the world, all the problems of the world, all the sins of the world, in order that I don't focus on my own sins, in order that I don't focus on my own life. And I see this so often as those people that are so consumed with, I can't believe that this is going on in our culture or our country or these this new law or these people that are engaged in sin or whatever. I can't tell you how many times I've experienced somebody that was just like that and just is the meanest person, is literally the meanest person. And so what do we do with that? It causes me to take a look back and say, maybe we're focused or fixing our attention in an unbalanced way. It's not to say that we disconnect ourselves from the world. It's not to say that we never get righteously angry at things that are, that are actually disgusting, actually wrong with our world. No, that's understandable. But it's to say, are we giving equal or even more attention to our own hearts, to our own families, to what we are engaged with, to, to, to see the dis- disorientation of our own heart before God. It's really easy to say, like the Pharisee, you know, in the Bible where he's like, ah, you know, I'm God, I'm glad I'm not like those other people. I'm glad that I'm not like those, all those other men, those extortioners, those tax collectors, you know, those adulterers, those idolaters. Thank you that I'm me, you know? Meanwhile, the tax collector, the, the most, you know, hated in all of Jewish society, right? He comes to God and says, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. He was looking inward where that other person was looking outward. Who was God? Who would God receive more? God gives his law to the proud, but his grace to the humble. In so many ways, we can get caught up in this idea that we're better than other people. Man, I'm a Christian. I'm better. I'm better. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm a good guy. I wouldn't get caught up in that stuff. They just love sin. They just love sin so much, right? The Bible does say they love sin. That's true. But you know who also loves sin? You did. You loved sin before you were God's child. You loved sin before God saved you out of the pit. You loved sin before God graciously and without any of your own doing scooped you out of the muck and the mire of the deadness that you were in and made you alive again. You were a beggar that had been given bread. And now you're trying to act like you found it, trying to act like you were the one who made it. No, no, you were given this bread. The steady diet of Christian outrage that we are often fed on social media, what is it doing to us? It's causing us to be more, have more anxiety, causing us to panic, causing us to be more um, fearful and at, at uh, not at ease, right? And yes, the Bible does say that we are in a battle, a spiritual battle, absolutely. But we are almost in spiritual PTSD, that every moment is the fiercest attack. Every moment, there's no rest. I can't have any rest. I constantly need to be on the alert. There's something here. There's something evil, something to be outraged about. There's something to be angry about. Meanwhile, God gives us the grace to just be at rest, to be at peace, to be with him because he's got it. He, 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 he's okay. He's capable. I have to ask myself, if Jesus were with me, if Jesus were reacting to these things, how would he respond? I think many people's thought is that he would just go from town to town, flipping over tables 24 seven, right? He'd just go, he'd just go there and he'd go to every pride parade, pride parade. And he just, you know, he'd pop the tires of it and like, you know, whatever, like, might he do that? Sure. I'm not, I don't, I'm not here to speculate necessarily, but what also would Jesus be caught up in? 
what was he involved in when he was on, on earth? Well, meeting with people, being in people's homes, spending time with them, building relationships with them, teaching them, right? Like so much of that is like teaching his disciples to like follow him, right? It wasn't just like, man, the world is so evil out there. Sometimes we can f- spend so much attention and uh, on just the world out there that we don't bolster and grow the the community and the family that we have right with us right like you're always out there condemning everything what about just being in here and say okay well god's given me this family and god's given me you know this marriage how can i foster this how can i grow here how can i be present at this table these things here's the deal here's the deal in the midst of these outrage these things that cause him righteous anger right understood um they don't control him they don't control him They're not causing him to be, uh, you know, irritated with his family members or they're not causing him to be, you know, uh, say things that are out of pocket or wrong because he's just so angry. That's not righteous anger. Righteous anger doesn't lead you down a path to being super mean and and just insufferable. No, righteous anger is controlled. But if you're controlled by that stuff, if that's what's guiding your whole life is this anger, I don't think that's righteous. I just don't. And I've been there when you're just like letting your own personal life spread in and you're just using it as an outlet. I'm just angry at things that are going on with my own heart and my own life or, you know, things that I feel like just angry about. And I'm just going to get them out on other people. I can't believe how sinful they are. I can't believe how wicked the world is. You're just using it as an outlet. That's not, that's that's not what it's about. That's just that that stuff you got to deal with in your own heart. And maybe by the time you deal with that, when you come out, you'll be able to engage with people in a more Christ-like way. That's what I need to tell myself. It's like, Isaac, deal with things in your own heart. And then maybe when you are healed, when you are healing, other people won't trigger you so bad and you won't see them as disgusting because it's part of how you see yourself. But You'll see them as people just like you were that need saving, that need grace, that need God. Thanks for watching this video. I uh, hope, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something from it. Thanks to everyone on Patreon. I love you guys. And until next time, God bless.